the home health aid orientation for home care network we're going to go over the home health aid orientation packet that you should have in front of you at this time the following information is relevant to the success of the role of the home health aid here at home care network please make sure that you go over all of the information and learn um, if you have any questions you can always contact your director of nursing and you should have been given the name of your director of nursing and also the contact numbers for that director if those were not given to you already please make sure that you get with the human resources director or with your particular office and make sure you always have that information with you let's go over the office structure the director of nursing is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the office each office has an office manager the director of nursing manages and supervises all clinical staff this includes office and field and the office manager manages and supervises all clerical staff each office is set up according to the needs of the individual office you will be instructed on the layout of your office staff by a designated person it is your responsibility to learn each of these roles and have knowledge of the significance of each employee has in the day-to-day -day operations of the office let's go over the chain of command it is very important to follow the chain of command to ensure the success of home care network each agency has an assigned administrator that is responsible for each office within that agency the executive administrator is the immediate supervisor of the agency administrators and is executive manager for the clinical training education and billing departments the executive administrator oversees all agencies and is first in command on clinical decisions for home care network at any time that you have concerns questions and or issues you must contact your director of nursing if the director of nursing is unable to assist it will be reported to the administrator allow the administrator time to address your concerns the administrator will address your questions or concerns and if the administrator does not have an immediate answer your questions and concerns will be directed to the executive administrator home care network asks our staff to be open to change at all times as we continue to make decisions to progress towards the continued success of the company welcome to the team we are happy you are here clerical staff immediate supervisor of all clerical staff is the office manager clerical staff sets up the schedule and will contact you for late paperwork if you have any questions about scheduling please contact the clerical staff in charge of scheduling at your office the care plan will contain aid frequency and all tasks that need to be performed should also contain instructions specific to the patient's care make sure that you follow the care plan as documented and contact a nurse if you have any questions <clears throat> okay let's go over the tasks tasks are chosen by the RN that performs either the start of care the research certification visit or a resumption of care visit the task should be relevant to the patient's care only one type of bath should be chosen if a particular bath is chosen and the patient or caregiver um, don't want to take that particular bath on that day um, they're supposed to get into the shower patient may not be feeling well wants to do just a, a bed bath or a chair bath then make sure that you are contacting the office and getting that instruction specifically from another registered nurse um, because the patient or caregiver cannot give you instruction um, at all in order to change the type of bath then you want to make sure that you're documenting that on your home health aid care uh, on your home health they note that you did call the RN that you spoke with and that you did receive instruction to be able to go ahead and change that bath at that time the RN will go ahead and document that information if it needs to be a permanent change or whether it was just a change for that particular day um, <clears throat> TAS should have every visit or once a week next to it and that's your instructions from the RN again if um, the RN puts for a shampoo every visit and the patient or the caregiver only wants a shampoo once a week make sure that you're passing that information on to the office so that the RN can go ahead and go in and change that particular task 
Um, for your documentation, you should make sure that you're answering done or patient or caregiver decline. Patient specific instructions will be in the comment section of the care plan. So for example, if a patient has an ortho boot, you have to be able to know if you are able to remove that ortho boot during your bath that you're giving the patient or if you have to cover it up because it's non-removable. If for any reason you ever go into a patient's home and that patient has a, a wound dressing on, any type of ortho device, um, anything um, clinical, and you're not sure on what to do, make sure that you're contacting the office and speaking with the registered nurse to give you instructions on what to do. Reporting. Make sure that you are reporting all your questions and concerns to a nurse. Report any new skin problems. Um, report any problems with family dynamics or changing a patient's condition to a nurse. Document what you reported to that nurse on a communication note. Now let's go over paperwork and turning your notes in daily by 10 a.m. All paperwork is due into the office by 10 a.m. the following business day. A designated employee assigned by the office manager will contact staff on a daily basis if paperwork is not received in a timely manner. An employee will be reported to the director of nursing if that particular employee is uncooperative with the clerical staff. Also, the agency has a new policy on late penalties for paperwork, so $5 deduction per day from each visit uh, will be deducted for each day that the paperwork is late. Past due visits. This report is ran every morning and includes all visits from the previous day and any visits before that day. These visits are discussed in every single morning meeting. The clerical staff is responsible for obtaining the paperwork and getting that report cleared. The designee of the clerical staff will contact you for paperwork when it is not turned in according to the policy and this information is monitored and reported to the director of nursing. Schedules. The scheduler reviews all patient schedules every Monday. Review your schedule every Thursday and contact the scheduler with any revisions. This is very important because usually by Thursday the scheduler will have your schedule for the following week um, taken care of. It is important at that time for you to go in and review it and make sure that all the visits are on the particular days that um, you will visit those patients. Um, we want to make sure that when we're reviewing and applying late penalties that we are doing it the correct way. So if you have visits scheduled on Monday, you're not going to see those patients until Wednesday. Make sure that you are getting that information to the scheduler so those visits are put on the correct day because we don't want to be deducting money starting on Tuesday from Monday visits when you're not actually seeing those patients until Wednesday. So we just want to keep on track with that, um, not just because of late penalties, but also making sure that we are aware of the visits and the patients that you're seeing each day. Um, <clears throat> The scheduler will review your requests and then make any changes if they're permitted. If a patient is requesting certain days, certain times, um, and you're moving your visits outside of those particular days, the scheduler will let you know. Also, um, on the purple sticky in the patient's chart, when you're in your hot box in Kinzer, if you see a purple sticky, always make sure that you are moving your arrow to be able to see that purple sticky and read it. That's any pertinent information that everybody would need to know about that particular patient, whether it's a um, patient likes to be seen on certain days. Um, some patients you have to call the caregiver in order for the caregiver to let you in. You know, just specific instructions that patients and family have. We put that information on that purple sticky note um, so that we're making sure that we're keeping them um, happy and following their instructions. On complaints, all complaints are reported to the director of nursing or designated person upon the DON's absence as soon as possible. Each complaint must be documented by the person receiving the complaint on the patient complaint form. All complaint forms must be filled out completely and accurately. All complaints must be investigated upon receiving without delay, if at all possible.
And let me point out at this time, no complaint is too small. So don't take it upon yourself to decide whether or not a complaint is important or not. All complaints are important and all complaints have to be reported to the director of nursing. Um, that director or designated person will follow protocol. They will take action, follow up, and document. All complaints must be completely resolved within 30 days of the receipt of that complaint. Each complaint must be investigated without prejudice. So to point out again, no matter how minute an employee may feel the complaint is, it has to be investigated without prejudice. Report all complaints to the administrator and executive administrator in a timely manner that is done by the director of nursing. And all complaints are kept in a complaint notebook, which is kept in the director's office at each particular one of our locations. The director of nursing should report all complaints involving abuse, neglect, and or exploitation to the administrator immediately. Employee concerns. <clears throat> Here at Home Care Network, we are... Um, an advocate for our patients, but also we are advocates for our employees. So all employee concerns should be reported to the director of nursing or a designated person upon the director of nursing's absence. If for any reason your concern uh, may involve the director of nursing or you don't feel comfortable going to the director of nursing with a particular complaint or concern, then you can contact and speak with your administrator. You must make sure that that concern is documented. It will be investigated by the director of nursing or another designee upon receipt. Now, the concern doesn't necessarily have to be about just employees, other employees in the home, um, issues that you, you may be having with particular employees in the office. This is also things that you see in the pers in the patient's home. So we also have to investigate any abuse, neglect, or exploitation that you may see and report to the office. So it may not necessarily be just complaints from a patient or a caregiver um, that they're calling into the office, but also if you see these particular things in the patient's home, it should be reported to the director of nursing because any allegations of abuse, neglect, or exploitation have to be reported to the administrator immediately because there are certain steps that we have to follow um, for those particular three things. So again, any concerns that you may have, whether it's with another nurse or a home health aide or any other disciplines going into the home, or if it is uh, patient caregiver related, make sure all your concerns are reported to the director of nursing. Case conference. For a couple of our offices, we have weekly case conference. And if your office has case conference, case conference is mandatory. During case conference, a list of the patients coming up for recertification in the next couple of weeks is discussed and the office manager or who they designate will email this list out to everyone. Each discipline is given a report of what has gone on in the patient's home for the past 60 days. And this information is important because we have to notify the physician of what has been going on with that patient for the past 60 days, which is also known as a 60-day summary. The RN that is going out to perform the recertification, it's her responsibility or his responsibility to make sure that the 486 is completed with this information. So during the case conference, these are the things that are discussed that allow the RN to be able to complete the 60-day summary or the 486 is the particular form that we use. So make sure, again, if your office has case conference, please note that case conference is mandatory. If for any reason you're not able to attend case conference, then you need to speak with your clinical manager. Now let's go over the home health aid in services. There are 12 mandatory in services that we have to conduct per year as an agency for our home health aides. The offices are responsible for making sure that those 12 in services are taken care of by each home health aide. Those in services can be self reviewed with the quiz that you would need to turn into the office once you've completed. 
office meetings and or computer oriented in services. We are leaning more towards the computer oriented and we'll be getting those set up on our website so you will be able to go over and do your 12 in services online and then your quizzes will be sent to the office. Um, and just keep in mind that all in services are mandatory. Time off requests. Um, time off for each employee is basically first come first serve and it's all approved by your director of nursing. You have to make sure that you do go to the human resources website and complete a time off request. The policy and procedure. The manual is kept in the director of nurses office with availability to staff whenever it is needed. It contains the policies and procedures adhered to by Home Care Network. Healthcare Consult Link mails updated policies as changes are made in the home health industry. We review the updated policies and we instruct the staff on those new policies, including a sign-in sheet. And then we place those new policies in the notebook. If for any reason we have new policies and we don't call in everyone to go over those policies because we do get them monthly, they will be emailed to you. Please make sure that once you rescind, receive an email of the updated policy that you CC or reply back um, acknowledging that you have received those new policies. OSHA. Stericycle is the company that Home Care Network uses to keep in compliance with OSHA guidelines. Stericycle has scheduled pickup times for each office for disposal of hazards. The Stericycle representative conducts an annual mandatory in-service for each office and inspection is conducted at this time. The DON keeps the Stericycle OSHA notebook updated in the Director of Nurses Office. Please make sure that when you are notified of the annual mandatory in-service that you do make it a um, priority to attend. Just a quick review of the dress code for the field staff. Make sure that you are wearing scrubs, that the scrubs are neatly pressed, wear comfortable closed toe shoes, make sure that you always wear your name bag, name badge each time that you go into a patient's home. Jewelry should be minimal and tattoos and other body piercings should not be visible. Medical supplies. Email any medical supplies that are needed to the supplies email address to your particular office. If you have any questions about medical supplies, contact the designated person in your office that is responsible for ordering medical supplies. And the last thing, visit orientation. As a new home health aide, you will be assigned to ride along with an experienced home health aide if necessary. And then once you are comfortable and ready to be independent with visiting patients, you will be scheduled to ride out with an RN or meet an RN at a particular patient's home in order to be signed off and get your skills check off. Again, if you have any questions at any time during your orientation or even once your orientation is over, make sure that you contact your director of nursing for your particular office. And if there's anything that your director is not able to assist you with, you can always contact your administrator or you can always at any time contact Latanya Williams, who's the corporate educator and trainer at lwilliams at homecarenetwork.com. Thank you.